million of people, sorry, and only 200 people have been vaccinated. Right. Um, it's, it's so slow. It's a difficult situation here in Mexico. Well, right. I it's see. Other. You bring it closer to me. I don't know what it is. I guess in Canada is is so different. Well, it's been quite slow. It's starting to move a little bit now, but uh, it's been a supply issue because we don't have a manufacturing plant in Canada. So we have to rely on what has been purchased from other countries. So the supply issue has been what's made it so slow. Yeah, maybe it's, it's the same, same, but here we are a lot, a lot, lot of people. And with the problem of the vaccine AstraZeneca was another problem. Oh, because, uh, yeah. The government has uh, buy a lot of that vaccine, uh, vaccine but right. it's restricted right, right now the use of that. Yes. Uh, Chela, did you introduce Karen today? I'm sorry? I'll introduce, I thought you, you do, would you like to introduce Karen today, Professor Karen? I'll introduce, fine. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm not hearing well. Okay, I, I'll do that. Mm -hmm. uh, you'll be sharing your presentation, am I right, Dr. Karen? Yes, I will share it. So we could start, ma'am? Sure. Okay. Most respected Dr. Karen Danielchuk from Canada, who's a prisoner of Vassal. Most respected Dr. Chella Dreyser, Pakinathan Chella Dreyser. Professor Claudia, Dr. G. Kishore. All my dear teachers, a warm welcome to one and all to the session of P and Community Coaching exclusively for women. I take this opportunity to introduce our dignified speaker, Dr. Karen Danwichuk, who's from Canada. Ma'am is a professor of the sport management in the School of Kinesiology and Associate Dean of the Faculty of Health Sciences at the University of Western Ontario in London, Canada. Throughout her career at the Western, Ma'am had also served as coordinator of the Intercollege Athletics and undergraduate chair of the Kinesiology. Prior to working at the Western, Ma'am taught and coached the Hong Kong International School. Her research interests include sports participation, women's representation in sport leadership and sport marketing. Ma'am has been a leader in global sport management, professional organization serving as former president, treasurer, and chair of the International Relations Committee of the North American Society for Sport Management. She is the founder and current president of the World Association of Sport Management, WASM, and also founder and honorary member of the Asian Association of Sport Management, as Ma'am has been awarded the Earl F. Segler Lecture Award, NASM Highest Scholarly Honor, the GAP Patton Distinguished Service Award, and is a NASM Research Fellow. Ma'am was Assistant Chef Administration of Team Canada for the World University Games, University at in Sicily in 1997. Assistant coach of the Canadian Women's Golf Team at the World University Golf Championship FISO in South Africa in 2008 and has attended the FISO Games in Beijing in 2001 and Bangkok in 2007 in presentation capacities. I must also be a competitive athlete and has coached tennis, squash, and golf at the university levels. Ma'am holds degrees from McMaster University for the Bachelor of Physical Education, University of Western Ontario Masters, and the University of Toronto. Throughout her career at Western, Ma'am has also served as a coordinator of Intercollege Athletics and undergraduate chair of kinesiology. Prior to working at Western, Ma'am taught and coached at the Hong Kong International School. Ma'am has also published extensively in a variety of international journals and presented her research globally. Ma'am has delivered keynote address at numerous scientific conferences, including Taiwan, Japan, Thailand, South Korea, China, um, Malaysia, Colombia, Spain, Ireland, Argentina, and Macau. Ma'am has been a leader in the global sport management professional organized, serving as a former president, treasurer, and chair of the International Relations of the Committee of North American Society of Sport Management. Indeed, ma'am. Ma'am, 
we are very fortunate and blessed to have an eminent uh, speaker, a great administrator and the leader of the World Association of Sport Management, the president with us. I think this is utmost because this particular program is exclusive of women and this started with the International Women's Day on 8th March. Ma'am, I, I really need to, on behalf of the Ministry of Youth Business Sports Government of India, Ministry of Women and Child Development, Government of India, lecture by National College of Physical Education, a warm welcome to our most dignified speaker, Dr. Karen Jajan. Ma'am, a warm welcome to you. I also welcome my mentor, my guru, I could say, Professor Chep Pakinath and Chaladurai, sir, who specializes in organizational theory and organizational behavior in the context of sport. Sir has taught in the University of Madras in India, the University of Western Ontario in Canada, and the Ohio State University in USA, and Troy University in USA. Sir's contribution has been recognized worldwide over the past three decades. Chela has become sport management international sports spokesperson. Sir has been invited to speak at concert on a worldwide basis, presenting at national, international conferences in places, including Canada, Chile, Cyprus, England, Finland, France, Greece, Hungary, India, Italy, Japan, Kuwait, Malaysia, Morocco, Netherlands, Norway, Poland, Portugal, Republic of the South Africa, Scotland, South Korea, Spain, Sweden, Taiwan, Turkey, and United States. Sir has also been associated with the Olympic movement for a long time, he is among the few international scholars offering Olympic Solidarity Movement for a long time. So he is also among the few international scholars offering uh, Olympic Solidarity's Executive Masters in Sport Organizations, that is MEMOS. He takes a leadership role in Human Resource Management Module of the MEMOS program. Also a member of the Sport Commission and Scientific Board of the Olympic Council of Asia, which organized its first sport congress in Kuwait City in 2009. Sir was at Guatemala for the Olympic Solidarity Business, is the first recipient of the Olaf Jegler Award, Ziegler Award from the North American Society of Sport Management, the first recipient of the Merit Award for Distinguished Service to Sport Management Education from the European Association of Sport Management. He's also the uh, first recipient of Sport Management Scholar Lifetime Achievement Award from the Southern Sport Management Association in 2009. Sir received an uh, honored, honored as an eminent scholar in volume 10 number of 35 of the International Scholarly Journal, Revista International de Ciencias de Del Deporte International Journal of Sports Sciences. What else to speak? You are the, I'd say, encyclopedia of sport management. You are proud and honored to have one as you being an Indian and uh, you are known globally across. And I was very much wanting that now we have 5,000 women teachers. And for the information, all of the teachers. Please, I all want you to see who my guru is, my mentor is. That's none other than Professor Chella. And that's why I'm here today. So I, 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 this is very much I was wanting because I, I don't think I can express back in other ways. So, sir, on behalf of the Ministry of the Professor and Sports, Government of India, and Ministry of Women and Child Development, lecture by National College of Physiology, a warm welcome to you, sir. Welcome, Thank sir. you. I also welcome Professor Claudia from Mexico, a very uh, close associate of this institute. And I, I believe you are a part of us. A warm welcome to you, madam. I also welcome Dr. G. Kishore, sir, who's the principal and regional director of Sports Authority of India. And I also welcome all my dear teachers. We have nearly 5,000 of uh, the, my the teachers. I, I, I call you as girls, with all bubbling, with full of energy. So today, Dr. Karen, you can expect a lot of questions and you can put a lot of questions in the chat box to find them responding. They're very smart. Um, my girls who are there. You, so a warm welcome to all my dear teachers. Once again, a warm, a warm welcome to each one of you. Over to you, Professor Karen, for your session, please. Well, thank you, Dr. Usha, for that kind introduction. I'm just going to share my screen and... We'll get that up. Uh, so good evening and good afternoon for some and good morning for others. I'm absolutely delighted to have been invited uh, by Kilo India for the sixth batch of the physical education and community coaching training program. And in particular, I extend my thanks to Drs. Kishore and Usha Nair for this privilege 
And I do recognize the Sports Authority of India, uh, which is housed at the Lakshma Bai National College of Physical Education. And thank you to the Ministry of Youth Affairs and Sport for supporting this outstanding training program. Uh, there have been numerous coaches who have gone through the program, but this is a very unique one. Uh, as Dr. Usha has indicated, um, uh, focused on women. So welcome, you are leaders, you are champions, and you are role models. I would also like to extend my uh, welcome to Dr. Cheladurai, who has already been mentioned. He is also my mentor. We consider him the father of sport management. He has been a long time friend and colleague. So welcome Dr. Chella today. And Thank also uh, uh, Professor Claudia, uh, my colleague from Mexico. So thank you. During my talk, I'm going to address uh, some sport related facts about my country of Canada. I'll speak a bit about the structure and how sport is administered. I'll mention the Canadian physical activity guidelines and some of the programs that we have operating to keep Canadians active. I will touch upon the impact of the current pandemic on sport in Canada. And I will end with just a few remarks about the World Association for Sport Management. As Dr. Usha had indicated, I'm currently president of this academic association. So I do want to provide a few remarks as to how India might uh, be involved with this organization. Just to give you some historical context, you'll see a map of Canada in the United States and you'll see a small red X uh, where those large lakes are in the middle of Canada. And that's where uh, Professor Chaladurai and I live. That's where our university, Western University, it was rebranded to that name in 2012. Uh, but the formal name of the university is the University of Western Ontario. Uh, but you can see our location is um, uh, very much south in the country of Canada, and our location is south of many states in the United States. Our university has approximately 40,000 students from more than 120 countries. And we do have a lot of international students from India, and we are really working hard to uh, attract more undergraduate and graduate students from your country. Our university has 11 faculties and many programs uh, at both the undergraduate and graduate level. I belong to the Faculty of Health Sciences, which is composed of six schools uh, kinesiology, health studies, nursing, physical and occupational therapy, communication sciences that includes audiology and speech language pathology. So it's a very large faculty. My home faculty, however, is kinesiology, uh, where I teach sport management and sport marketing. And Professor Chella Durai is uh, Professor Emeritus uh, from our School of Kinesiology as well. The Canadian Center for uh, Activity and Aging is very unique and it's part of our faculty and our uh, School of Kinesiology. It is a not-for-profit research and education center. It's very unique because it focuses on promoting physical activity and well-being in older adults. So the older adults um, physically come to the Canadian Centre and they participate in exercise classes, uh, research projects that are conducted by our professors and our students. We have our students leading the exercise classes and the research labs, as well as some of the seniors themselves being trained to lead those classes as well. 
So it's very unique. It's been highly successful and it's one of our key centers um, that's aligned with our School of Kinesiology and our faculty. A second one that I wanted to point out is the International Center for Olympic Studies, which is um, a, re a research resource uh, center that's been around now since 1989 and it's focused on scholarship related to the Olympic Games as well as the Paralympic Games and the Olympic movement. So what does it do? There is physical space there. There's all sorts of um, Olympic um, paraphernalia that has been collected along with a huge um, uh, source, a library of scholarship related to the games. The center runs a symposium conference once every two years. It produces a journal. It has an ongoing lecture series and as I say, it really is an outstanding resource center. So next to the, uh, the research center in Lausanne, Switzerland, this would be uh, the second largest outside of the country of Switzerland. So I put some images on the screen here of Canada. Uh, some of you I'm sure have visited the country uh, and others you uh, who may not have visited uh, might recognize uh, some of these uh, pictures that I have on the screen. Uh, we are noted for uh, the uh, flag uh, depicting the Canadian maple leaf, of course, the maple tree. And in the bottom right corner, you'll see the syrup that comes from that tree. And it's usually this month, the month of March, uh, during uh, the transition from winter to spring where the sap is collected. Western Canada, of course, is uh, one of the prettiest areas of our country, and it's full of lakes and, of course, the Canadian Rockies. And, of course, we did host the uh, Winter Olympic and Paralympic Games in 2010 in Vancouver, Whistler. Uh, you'll also see Niagara Falls depicted there, and that, of course, is on the border with the United States. And you might recognize the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, um, which is a national service. And many of the uh, officers are often seen on horseback, hence the picture that I've indicated uh, there. Some more images uh, show our geography, which is very important. Uh, geography, of course, relates to the climate and it relates to many of the sport physical activity uh, pursuits that one can engage in. Uh, so it's not only winter sports, of course, we have four distinct seasons uh, uh, and the sports um, can be participated in many uh, um, all year long because of indoor facilities as well when it gets too cold during the winter months. Uh, in terms of the land mass, um, Canada is the second largest country in the world. It is bordered by three oceans, and that's really important because when you look at India, it as well is surrounded by water, and that has a great influence on um, a sport and physical activity. Our population, however, is very small in comparison to many countries around the world and in consideration of the size of the physical mass. So only 38 million people. We are broken up into 10 provinces and three territories. Uh, the greatest portion of our population uh, live in the cities and 90% uh, of our population lives very close to the United States border. So, the city in which I live in London uh, is only uh, one hour um, uh, from the US border. If you go due west, an hour drive by car, uh, two hours in the other directions. Uh, so we have a large concentration of the population in the Southern part of the country. Uh, of course, our first language is English, uh, but our second language is French that is spoken in the province of Quebec, as well as some of the Eastern 
provinces. So here you see a world map that really gives you the orientation of the location of Canada in relation to India. And of course, um, we are nowhere near the population of India, um, even though um, our uh, size in terms of uh, length and width and coastline is, is much larger. So there are many uh, factors that influence or impact sport and leisure. And uh, these factors uh, range from economic to social, cultural, technological, environmental, and political. And the example of the current pandemic, the COVID-19, is just a perfect example of a, a social uh, influence around sport and leisure. And uh, certainly it has had a huge impact when things have been closed as an example in our country, it's forced people to get outside and do a lot of uh, outdoor physical activity. Um, and I'm sure that that's the case in uh, many countries of the world. Uh, unfortunately, uh, when you look at uh, another factor such as uh, the political situation, when we have uh, political protests and wars going on, that, that also has uh, an impact on the ability of people to uh, participate and spectate sport. So just touching on um, uh, a very small number of those. Uh, here's an example of how geography does have an impact. Uh, many of you would know that dragon boat racing uh, is very popular in parts of Asia, but it is also popular now in many countries outside of Asia. Uh, Canada in particular has dragon boat racing in the spring and the summer. However, the sport of it was adapted to be um, done in the winter as well. And these pictures show the capital city of Canada being Ottawa. And there's a canal that runs through it called the Rideau Canal. Uh, because the city is very cold during the winter, the uh, canal freezes over and people can skate on it. And Ottawa does have a winter festival and uh, a few years ago, they decided to put the dragon boats themselves on the ice. And instead of using canoe paddles to move the, um, the boats along, they use the brooms from the sport of curling uh, to propel themselves. So it's a perfect example of a summer activity being adapted to a different season and a different um, environment. Um, Many of um, you- Dr. Karaman, yes. could just, i just like to speak of that previous one, please. Sure. Your previous. Ma'am, I'm telling you, you're watching this picture here, so you're watching this picture, the dragon boat portraits, so in the sardiyo, there's a canal, this canal is full of water, so it's full of water, so people have to improvise it, adapt it, and you'll see, जो पैरल के बदले इन्होंने एक दूसरा एक कर्ज के लिए यूज करते हैं तो उस तरह से इन लोगों ने किया है जो जो भी देख रहे हैं एक बहुत बड़ा कैनाल है जो सिटी में ही है वहां पर जब वो जम गया बर्फ जम गया है उसके ऊपर ये लोग ये ड्रैगन बोट रेस कराते हैं तो सर मैडम ये बता रहे कि हम लोग ये लोग कैसे उसको माहौल के मुताबिक इसको एक बदलाव ला रहे हैं जो कि हम देख रहे हैं कि पानी में जो चलता है उसको किस तरह से इम्प्रोवाइज किया है तो थैंक यू थैंक्स थैंक्स Okay, many of you would know the answer to this question uh, because many people outside of our country are quite familiar with the fact that ice hockey, which is played by both men and women, boys and girls, is uh, our official, according to the government, national sport. However, many people, even some Canadians, don't recognize that this is our official national summer sport, and that is lacrosse that can be played both outdoors on a field as well as indoors in an arena. So I just like to show you some girls uh, playing 
lacrosse here. And this is the under 19 uh, Canadian uh, versus American uh, teams playing uh, an experimental match in the fall of 2019. seeing a match. Thank you for introducing us to this particular game of Black Rose. Thank you. Yes, and I just want to add that this particular sport is uh, and was uh, played by uh, our native Canadians. So there's great significance to the fact that it has been declared our official national sport because um, uh, those of us who live in Canada are settlers, so to speak, and we honor our uh, Native Canadians, our First Nations community. And there's a, a real focus on trying to recognize and bring more attention to our Aboriginal and Native peoples. The fastest growing sport, though, in Canada is now cricket. And that may surprise you, uh, some it may not be surprising. And of course it's played by uh, both women and men, girls and boys uh, in Canada. Of course, we have a lot of uh, people have immigrated to Canada and that has been part of the reason why it has increased in popularity uh, in recent years. These are the popular participation sports in Canada. And the point that I'd like to make here is that during this past year of the pandemic, some of these activities have become more popular than ever. And two of them on the list are golf and tennis because they were allowed to be played, whereas the other activities and other sports um, were shut down because of uh, the fact that they involved uh, team competitions and with the pandemic it was considered uh, not safe enough to be interacting. Now during the winter months uh, people were getting outdoors and uh, using the physical space for walking and snowshoeing and cross-country skiing and those sorts of things that they could do on their own or with one or two other people. But 
uh, this list, as I said, is certainly uh, affected by what has gone on this past year with respect to the pandemic. These are the activities that I uh, participate in uh, throughout the year. Um, cycling, uh, and I'd like to point out that you cannot buy a bicycle anywhere, um, at least in my region now, because uh, all the bicycle shops um, are sold out of their bicycles because of the popularity <clears throat> due to the pandemic. The other activities um, uh, during the uh, nicer weather, I'm, I'm golfing, I'm playing tennis, I'm hiking, uh, swimming, and during the winter months, I participate in playing indoors, squash, and outdoors. I'm involved in snowshoeing, cross-country skiing, downhill skiing, and uh, also skating. So um, I do like to uh, keep active. And of course, we are privileged uh, to have some physical activity space where we can be outdoors. With respect to how sport is organized in Canada, it falls under our federal department of Canadian heritage. And a body called Sport Gover uh, Canada governs sport. So the government itself uh, provides financial support to Sport Canada to operate hosting events such as national uh, sport events, um, Olympic Games or Commonwealth Games or Pan American Games, a sport services program that includes all of our national sport uh, organizations and a program called Athlete Assistance that provides funding to our elite athletes who are working towards national and international competitions. So like many countries around the world, we have a lot of national sport organizations. Um, and uh, one example is called U Sports, which is the national governing body for uh, inter-university sport in our country. So most of our universities in Canada do have intercollegiate teams. These are for elite athletes. Uh, they get selected to play on their university team. And there are competitions within their region. Uh, so there are regional uh, championships and then uh, there are national championships as well. We also have multi-sport organizations that service all of those national organizations. So I want to speak to just a few of those. Uh, the Coaching Association of Canada, and I recognize many of you as participants, uh, are coaches at various levels. Uh, we've had this program in operation since 1974 and nearly 2 million uh, coaches have been trained uh, in the program and they can focus uh, in one of three streams, uh, coaching community sport or higher uh, level competitive sport or simply instruction of, of sport. So individuals can choose and there's typically five levels uh, for every sport. So many years ago when that program first started, um, I became involved in getting my own certification in the sports that I was coaching at the time, be it tennis, badminton and squash. So it's been around for a long time um, and uh, there's a real focus on uh, diversity and inclusion. So there are particular programs within it that focus on women in coaching, also coaching um, Aboriginal communities, LGBTQ, uh, athletes with disabilities, and masters or senior um, age athletes. Another organization is called Athletes Can, 
And these are current and retired national team athletes. And uh, they promote uh, developing leadership um, in both uh, segments of current and retired athletes. So very important um, body, um, athlete-centered. Uh, we do have a center for ethics in sport, and this is um, uh, our national anti-doping agency. And uh, it also delivers uh, programs such as safe sport, uh, sex and gender diversity, uh, risk management, uh, programs like that. But again, it's um, a not-for-profit organization uh, working for athletes, players, coaches, parents, officials, and administrators. Now, this would be of particular interest to you as participants. Uh, we uh, in Canada are underrepresented when it comes to girls and women uh, in Canadian sport as athletes, leaders, and decision makers. So this organization came about in uh, 1981. Uh, it was called the Canadian Association for the Advancement of Women in Sport. Uh, last year, it was renamed Canadian Women in Sport, and it has always uh, been um, an empowerment-focused organization that works towards um, uh, empowering girls and women and building a, a stronger, more equitable sport system. Uh, so there's all sorts of programming that goes on as well as uh, workshops, conferences, and written resources as well. So it's um, been a highly successful organization. However, we still have this problem of underrepresentation. Uh, this particular body focuses on the Aboriginal uh, community, and it is a voice uh, for that segment and promoting um, physical activity and recreation for our Native Canadians, our First Nations, our Inuit, who um, reside primarily in the northern regions of Canada and our Métis peoples um, in some of our Western provinces. Uh, so we do uh, have our country broken up into territories and provinces um, as you are broken up into various states. And we have uh, organizations that are at those levels as well as examples, Ontario volleyball and basketball. For the high schools um, in our province, we have um, a body um, that's been around for a long time and it unites the regional high school athletic associations um, so that competitions can <clears throat> be carried out between uh, the high schools. So it's an organizational body uh, that has that focus. Uh, many people argue that we should pay uh, more attention to grassroots community sports. So uh, we do have many organizations <clears throat> that exist at what we call the grassroots levels. And in our own uh, city here of London, we have a sports council. Uh, so I'm sure many of you come from cities and communities where you have organizations that are specific as well. Uh, highly controversial, do you put more funding in towards high performance elite sport or do you direct it more to the community level grassroots that builds? So should the, um, the importance be uh, the grassroots or should it be the elite? So it's a, uh, it's a philosophical uh, and largely debated issue in the country of Canada. So I'm gonna to turn to talking about sport and physical activity participation uh, in Canada and how we get and keep people uh, physically active. Uh, I think we can all appreciate that obesity is a, a world problem. 
some research has indicated that uh, unless we change things by the year 2050, uh, we're going to have more than 50% of men, 50% uh, of women and a quarter of the population of children um, uh, who will be obese. So unless we change things. So you as community coaches, uh, and teachers, our leaders, your champions to prevent this statistic or prediction from happening. Uh, so if obesity around the globe has tripled uh, since 1975. Um, globally, we have about 40% of the adult population overweight and a large portion being considered uh, medically obese. Uh, even children under age five um, are overweight and obese. However, the, the good news is that obesity is preventable. And we all know the reasons why we do have this world health crisis um, <clears throat> because of inactive people. And we have um, uh, increased in, in technology, too much sitting, not enough movement. And we as coaches and teachers um, have to battle this um, uh, phrase of uh, sitting is the new smoking. So too much time in front of a computer screen or a television, and we've got to get up and moving. So there's been a real increase in popularity of certain activities. This is an example, uh, e-sports where yes, it's competition and yes, there's a huge following both from participation and spectating, <clears throat> but compared to being more physically active, um, again, it's a lot of sitting uh, in front of a computer screen. There's a lot of devices that have been developed uh, in recent years so that people can physically wear watches or other devices that can measure heart rate and distances walked and um, uh, all sorts of other virtual training devices. There's even clothing uh, that's worn that will measure certain things as well. So. Uh, technology has impacted um, a lot of uh, what um, we can and are doing these days. Taking it back to Canadian sport, though, <clears throat> we are really focusing on physical literacy, which means educating um, people across the lifespan about the importance of skill development uh, at an early age, <clears throat> movement skills, uh, developing confidence in young people all the time, making it fun so that people will carry out being physically active throughout one's lifetime. So that's the concept of long-term athlete development. So we have a lot of programs in place focused on that. At the same time, thinking about equity, diversity, and inclusion. There have been studies done that measure the economic impact of reducing physical inactivity and sedentary behavior. So basically, uh, the economic uh, study that was done most recently suggests that only 15% of Canadian adults get the recommended 150 minutes per week of moderate to vigorous physical activity. So that's not a good statistic. We want to change that and therefore we feel that many stakeholders uh, uh, can contribute to making things better, not just individuals, but businesses and, and governments. 
to get Canadians more physically active. And that will have an impact on our healthcare system, fewer health issues um, and less money spent taking care of people who are ill because they have been uh, physically inactive. Having quality daily physical education has been a goal for decades. It's gone on throughout my lifetime and it's never been achieved. So this is a, a well-planned school program indicating that there should be <clears throat> mandatory daily physical education for at least <clears throat> 30 minutes each day for all students from kindergarten to grade 12. So we've had groups that have advocated this, <clears throat> but unfortunately uh, we have not succeeded in making that happen. Uh, we only have approximately in my province, 25% of the schools that have daily physical education. <clears throat> so what we need is a shift in priorities to recognize that physical activity uh, and getting away from sitting at a desk are really, really important to learning. And in fact, research has shown that children do better when they are given some physical activity time uh, during the day, even if it's in a class that is not physical education. So if it's a math class and there's a five minute break for them to get up and do some physical exercise at their desk, uh, some movement, uh, that that helps with concentration, it helps with test scores and that sort of thing. So there's a lot of um, pilot programs that are taking place such as instead of having chairs, using exercise balls to sit on, uh, taking breaks during classes, having desks where you stand. Um, at our university, um, it's become very popular for uh, staff and faculty members to request that they want a desk that moves uh, from the uh, sit down um, style to a stand up. Uh, scenario. Uh, Dr. Karen, could you just take sure. uh, give a break for two minutes so you can you need to have water, please. Can you go to the sure. previous slide, please? Previous slide, please. Yes. Uh, Ma'am, the uh, quality shadi shiksha ke baare mein baat kar rahi thi, kyunki inke yahan inhone ye banaya ki uh, har school mein bachon ko 30 minute ka uh, shadi uh, jo gati vidhi honi chahiye. Lekin iske baavjud bhi har school isme ye log dekhe ki even though ki policy mein implement qualified physical education teacher or daily quality school quality physical education daily quality physical education. better शारी शिक्षा में शारी गतिविधि में भाग लेना चाहिए क्योंकि जब इस तरह करते हैं तो वो लोग जो दूसरे पढ़ाई सब्जेक्ट पढ़ते हैं लेकिन दिमाग के तौर पे जो बच्चे खेलते हैं तो उन्होंने देखी कि एकेडमिक उनकी स्कोर अच्छी जाती है वो अच्छी तरह से समझ पाते हैं और वो बहुत अच्छा एकेडमिक से कर पाएंगे अगर बच्चे फिजिकल एक्टिविटी में शारीरिक गतिविधि में भाग ले तो एक रवैया बनना चाहिए इस तरह से इन लोगों ने मैंने बोला और इन्होंने बोला कि एक तो है जो बैठना क्योंकि बैठना एक बीमारी है इसे बोला कि ज्यादा देर बैठेंगे तो मुश्किल पड़ता है तो उसको कुर्सी को हटा के एक्सरसाइज बॉल के दौरान पे करा रहे हैं और बोलते हैं बीजेपी में एक्सरसाइज अगर ऑफिस होता है एक्सरसाइज ब्रेक इन मैडम की यूनिवर्सिटी में लोग रहे जो डेस्क है उसको हमारे हाइट के मुताबिक खड़ा हो बना तो खड़ा होकर डेस्क में बात कर सकते हैं इस तरह से एडजस्टेबल वाला डेस्क इन्होंने इन्होंने बोला कि हमको ऐसा चाहिए तो इस तरह से काफी बदलाव आ रहा है जिससे कि बच्चे ज्यादा थोड़ा सा और हिल पाए उसको मूव कर पाए और इस इस तरह से जो है शारीरिक शिक्षा जो स्कूल में है इसके बारे में बोला गया थैंक्स मैम आई जस्ट वॉन्ट यू गिव अ ब्रेक बिकॉज आई फाउंड यू नीड वॉटर ओके थैंक यू 
We have Canadian physical activity guidelines. I'm going to move through these slides quickly because the uh, format is the same, but um, they, these guidelines are for uh, various age groups. Um, and what it does is um, recommend the number of minutes of physical activity within that particular age group. So for example, uh, this is for the year, uh, early years of birth to four years of age. And it suggests that uh, this age group should uh, be physically active at least um, 180 minutes or three hours um, uh, throughout the day. And this includes a whole bunch of activities. So we move into the next um, uh, age bracket of five to 11 years old. And that's uh, one hour of moderate to vigorous uh, physical activity daily. Give some examples, how many times a week. Um, and then we move to the 12 to 17 year age bracket, still one hour daily recommended. We go to 18 to 64 years of age and it moves up at least 150 minutes uh, uh, of, uh, per week uh, in bouts of 10 minutes or more. So uh, a variety of activities and suggesting that at this uh, age, uh, you've got to add muscle and bone strengthening activities uh, at least two days a week and uh, really focusing on the fact that more physical activity provides greater health benefits. And then we move to uh, 65 years of age and older. And again, 150 minutes uh, per week and very similar, but the focus on um, understanding that if you don't do these things, um, it can lead to um, uh, issues with falls. So you've got to work at this age uh, on uh, increasing balance and preventing falls. So now I'm just briefly going to talk about some of the programs that we have in place in Canada. Uh, this first one called Participation has been around since 1971. And it was uh, developed because Canada was very embarrassed to find that the 60 year old adult Swedish person had the fitness of a 30 year old Canadian back at that time. And because of that research and revelation, uh, this, uh, it, the government decided to do something about it and a, no, a non-profit organization was founded to promote healthy living and physical fitness. And it started with a lot of television ads uh, that were delivered across the country, but this program has continued uh, to promote physical activity as part of our everyday life. And it is Canada's um, most well-known physical activity brand. Uh, so it's focused on uh, less sitting and more physical activity. Uh, the target are four uh, stakeholder groups. Uh, the first one being in uh, schools and parents to move children. So get them moving. The second is to move companies and organizations to get their employees uh, more physically active. The third is to uh, get governments to move citizens in the communities and get a more active participation uh, amongst citizens. And then the fourth is on uh, an educational basis for all Canadians to individually understand that 
you're going to live longer, you're going to lead a more enjoyable life if you are physically active. So this particular program called Up and Up and Go really means get up and get going or get moving is focused on uh, getting employees in an organization uh, more physically active. So there's a, a great program that um, focuses on that. A second one uh, is uh, called the Community Better Challenge. And, and that is to have a, uh, a little bit of a challenge or competition between cities or communities uh, to get them uh, physically active. And this is just an example of um, over a period of time, a competition between various um, communities. Dr. Karen, could you just go to the previous yeah. because the participants wanted to see your previous slides. Previous, please. Yes. One, previous, one more previous. One more. One more previous. They would just want to okay, see the okay. slide. No, you know, next, next. You can go next. Okay. No, that no, you can come forward. Yes, next. Yes, this is what the participants were wanting to see this. They wanted to see the slide. So that I saw in the oh, chat okay. box. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Because you were skipping okay. it past. They just wanted to see the slides. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, ma'am. You can now we can. Okay. So the employees. And now this is the communities. And this is still focused on the communities. And this is an example of various communities and um, a challenge in a period of time, um, getting uh, so many of the citizens in the community physically active. Ma'am, 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 please, previous one, please. Yeah. I just translate this. Ma'am, ke ye to ye bhot hamali bhi achha raega. Kyunki agar ham log hamare jo community me agar la sakte, inno ne competition community ke mutabi dikhaya ki kaun si community jada ghante activity active kara sakte. Is tarah se agar ham bhi koshish kar sakte, to ye aapke liye bhot achha ek example bhi raega. Thanks, ma'am. Thank you. You're welcome. Now this particular uh, program. Uh, was done in 2017, and it was to mark uh, the country's 150th anniversary. And it was to come up with um, 150 uh, physical activities uh, that uh, would range from sports to playground activities, uh, games, and it was called a playlist. So it challenges Canadians, or did in 2017, in communities, schools, and workplaces to see how many of the 150 activities they could become involved in. Uh, so uh, for uh, it was very successful. Uh, and there were a hundred events across the country that occurred in the year 2017. And uh, people were able to sign up and track their activities with a chance to win prizes. So this slide uh, just shows uh, one of our Northern Territories and the province of Ontario, which is where I live, and the most popular activities out of the 150 on that playlist. So you can see in my province that they were activities that could be done according to our geography and our climate. So we have four distinct seasons. We don't have as long a winter as in the Northwest Territories. So you'll see that the Northwest Territories were participating in sports that were snow-based um, uh, throughout the winter, say for a couple of activities such as swimming that was obviously done indoors. 
So it was done only in the year 2017 in celebration of our 150th anniversary. What, what is this, uh, toboggan? Uh, what, what does it mean? To, uh, to, tobogganing. Tobogganing. Oh, to, tobogganing is when you sit on a sled and um, you slide down a hill uh, that is um, covered with snow. Okay, yes. thanks, thank you. <laughs> yes. Now, a report came out in late 2016 uh, that was done by Participation and it compared children's <clears throat> physical activity across 38 countries. And the country of Slovenia in Eastern Europe came out on top in that report card. Uh, 86% of boys and 76% of girls were getting the recommended activity. But Canada did not score well. Uh, it was near the bottom of the 38 countries, along with the United States, Australia, England and Spain. Uh, some of the 38 even received a failing grade. And it was also found that uh, those countries that were considered less developed actually did better than the more developed countries. And one would suggest that in the more developed countries, uh, there's too many, uh, uh, children spending too much time in front of uh, computers and televisions where um, children in other countries may not have that opportunity. So the report card uh, indicated that uh, not even 10% of Canadian children were getting the recommended one hour of activity per day. Um, now, often what's used as an excuse for this is the fact that we have very cold winters, um, as well as too much time on the screen. But in reality, <clears throat> uh, I think it's a lack of value that is placed on sport and physical activity, which is extremely important. So there have been other programs by participation that have focused on teenagers. And this particular program in 2007 uh, started a 10 year project to get teenagers <clears throat> more physically active. And over 600,000 teenagers registered in the program from 2007 to 2017. And 93% uh, of the organizations uh, did find that uh, it really helped uh, teenagers uh, get involved. So it was a very uh, positive program it was uh, sponsored by Coca-Cola, which doesn't seem right because Coca-Cola, of course, is a high sugared drink, uh, but we all know that soft drink uh, companies and alcohol and tobacco companies have historically uh, sponsored um, a lot of physical activity and sport uh, programs and competitions. But aside from that, this teenager challenge was very successful. An another program uh, was for younger children and uh, to give them the opportunity to build their best day that would be fun and full of physical activity activity. It was done in 2018. And um, again, it was um, uh, developed uh, in partnership with 
uh, those uh, who have done the research, um, the Canadian Society for Exercise Physiology, Public Health, et cetera. And it's an interactive online experience to get kids um, uh, thinking and, and being physically active. Now with technology, uh, uh, the cell phones and other computers are able to keep track of the minutes that people um, stay physically active. And that's been a big part of uh, participation's programming because so many people are demanding that they want to see how well they are doing. So participation does have a, um, or did have a five-year strategic plan from 2015 to 2020. And it was to take the physically inactive uh, person and try to get them into optimal health by getting them physically active and by uh, getting away from sitting too much. So uh, their strategic plan was very good, uh, had uh, excellent goals and, and targets for those goals. Um, so for example, uh, increasing uh, from 63% to 70% of adults, uh, uh, accumulating at least 15 minutes of physical activity uh, at least one day per week. So small goals, but to moving them to more um, physical activity and to decrease the amount of time um, of being inactive. So behavioral goals and corresponding targets. We also have a program called Kids Sport that is directed at children who do not have the financial um, ability in their families to participate in sport. So it's a national not-for-profit organization that provides financial assistance uh, for children to be able to play um, and participate in sport. So there are various chapters across the country in the provinces and the territories to make this happen. Uh, it's been in operation since 1993 and we've had nearly um, a million children benefit uh, from being given the chance to play sport through grants that this organization called Kids Sport has provided. And it's introduced children to physical activity. So uh, a chapter can apply for um, a grant uh, there are some organizations that donate money, and there are many people who volunteer you, to be involved, um, to participate, and to run these programs. So this is an example of a children's dodgeball tournament in the province of Ontario uh, that is focused on that. So back to what I had indicated about physical literacy, it's uh, motivating and building confidence in children, making the physical activity fun, and uh, hopefully uh, that uh, confidence will carry over so that they'll continue to be motivated to be physically active and competent in various skills throughout the, the lifetime. Um, uh, another organization called Canadian 
Sport for Life is a movement to improve the quality of sport and physical activity in Canada. And this is done through improving athlete training um, and involving sport organizations, uh, teachers and coaches, et cetera. So there are long-term athlete development stages, uh, which provides a pathway system uh, to better sport, greater health, and higher achievement. So this graphic here shows uh, getting young children involved at a very early age and the various um, uh, age categories, um, an active start, learning the fundamentals, learning how to train, training to train. And then now it's getting into more elite, training to compete, training to win, but being active for life. So there are programs that are directed at each of these segments of the population. And the programming comes with um, education and training of, phys of uh, educators, physical educators, as well as coaches. So these are examples of the first three levels in the pathway system, the active start, the fundamentals stage, and the learning to train. This is just an example. I'm not going to read it to you, but it's the ages and the stages of a cross-country skier's long-term athlete development. So a parent uh, or um, a child can look at this and uh, see where she might uh, fit into this uh, according to age and the various uh programs that are in place and who is responsible for delivering them. So there are 10 factors that the long-term athlete development uh, focuses on. Um, uh, just to highlight a couple of them, that um, uh, fundamentals and emphasizing the word fun Learning basic sports skills has to be fun uh, because that's the only way to encourage um, a love for sport and keeping physically active throughout one's lifetime. So you as physical educators and, and coaches have to always remember um, you've got to instill um, this focus on, on fun. Uh, so that's um, one example. Uh, another uh, one here is competition. Uh, sometimes um, uh, young people uh, train too hard and um, too intensely that they experience injury and then they also get burned out and do not want to participate anymore. So um, this program uh, focuses on uh, the ways and the means to ensure that if um, someone is working towards um, a competitive level of sport, that it's done in the correct way, all the while recognizing um, the various um, uh, stages of development. So this is just a schematic of what I've, I've talked about, uh, the active start and um, lifelong learning in, in sport and lifelong physical activity. Uh, so sport for life, there are resources um, for various segments. Remember earlier in my presentation, I, I talked about equity, diversity, and inclusion. So there's programming in place to focus on uh, different groups, such as athletes with disabilities, um, those who work in recreation, uh, those who deliver it, 
So resources for coaches, resources for the physical educators, focus on women and girls, uh, parents, uh, in the uh, indigenous peoples, uh, newcomers, those are immigrants, those who uh, come to um, the country and should never be excluded. How can we include them more and develop program programming that is uh, of interest to them and will get them physically active? Uh, so education is a big piece. You as physical educators and teachers are uh, role models and you're the champions uh, that um, uh, are, are the leaders in this regard. So the resources, the literature that is in place um, uh, for this uh, uh, long-term athlete development uh, is, is broad. Their sport for life has some international projects in place that it advances the delivery of quality sport and physical liter literacy in various countries. So in the Caribbean, uh, in Andhra Pradesh is an example, uh, St. Lucia uh, with the National Olympic Committee, these are only uh, some examples of um, the movement that has been carried on in other countries uh, where Canadians have gone to train uh, individuals in other countries. So the Sport for Life Society is um, a world's leading provider for long-term athlete development. Uh, so education, uh, training, mentoring, and Facility, uh, facilitating a sports system that's going to last, that you just don't come in and show them and then leave, but you've got to train people uh, to carry on programming. Okay, as we come towards the end of my presentation, I just want to spend a couple of minutes talking about the impact of COVID-19 on physical activity around the world. Um, fitness applications on cell phones has grown 46% uh, worldwide in the year 2020, and it's expected to increase at a rate of 21% uh, right through to 2027. We've got video game usage that has increased 50%, TV viewing <clears throat> increase, and a weight gain amongst North Americans that's embarrassing. So these are not good things that have happened as a result of physical activity. <clears throat> Many people have bought a, a gym equipment that they can set up in their own homes, uh, but youth sport in Canada has suffered and uh, some of the examples of this uh, relate to local sports organizations. Um, all of them were affected by the pandemic. Many of them for the past year were temporarily closed. Uh, last summer in Canada, 92% uh, could not run any summer camps. Uh, almost a quarter um, felt that they could not recover without any financial support. So there are programs in place all around the world um, re-entering and uh, what's going to happen post pandemic. Uh, we know that sport is a really important part of returning to normal life um, as uh, things improve around the world uh, because we know that sport can build communities, break down barriers, and develop resilience in people. Uh, one positive thing in uh, our uh, education system uh, with physical education is that the teachers have taken their classes outside. And research has shown that students who study outside have better test scores and better self-regulation scores. So what does that mean? 
um, that the physical education classes that weren't allowed to um, continue to happen this past year inside in the gyms uh, were forced to go outside and do physical activity such as um, the left picture shows uh, children with the teacher snowshoeing and on the right it shows building a snowman. So the stimulus from the fresh air and the ability to exercise and be creative outside has been very positive uh, for physical education in the school system. So that this will hopefully carry over and that there's going to be in the future um, more the way the physical education used to be where there was more outdoor physical activity. So I'm just going to end talking about uh, the World Association for Sport Management. Uh, I have the privilege of serving as the president of this organization. It was formed in 2012, and it is the umbrella group for six uh, regional sport management associations around the world in Asia, Africa, Latin America, North America, Europe, and Australia, New Zealand. So these regional associations were formed at various um, times and uh, we determined that we wanted to have um, um, an umbrella organization uh, that has as its mission to facilitate the research, uh, the teaching and the learning um, excellence uh, in sport management globally. And we think that we've done um, a good job at that uh, so far. We've only been in operation a very short period of time. Uh, our office is located in Taipei, Taiwan, our business office. Uh, but we did spend a few years forming the organization with representatives from all around the world. Um, we really want India to be involved uh, in this organization uh, and uh, we have offered and run three conferences since 2012, uh, first in Madrid, Spain in 2014, in Countess Lithuania in 2017 and Santiago, Chile in 2019. We have the next conference in Doha, Qatar in March of 2022. So we invite any of you who are interested in coming to this conference. Uh, we do publish uh, a book series um, and we invite articles to be published in these books or certainly to share the knowledge that's contained in these books. Uh, we have various partnerships with organizations around the world and certainly uh, we're involved now with um, your organization, thanks to Dr. Usha Nair and her uh, hard work and uh, this outstanding program. Uh, so how India can be, become involved is to uh, look at joining the Asian Association for Sport Management joining the World Association for Sport Management. You can join as an individual member or you can enjoy, uh, uh, join it as an organization. Um, come to the conference, ask us for help with any programs you'd like to operate or deliver. Uh, we've got uh, plenty of people to um, help out with teaching and, and doing research projects. Um, certainly, we welcome any volunteers as well. So I'd like to conclude by really suggesting that you as teachers and coaches are role models, you are champions, you are the leaders, you are the ones who are going to have the impact on children to help them recognize the importance of physical activity, getting physically active active and staying physically active throughout the lifespan. 
Uh, whether you work with children, you may work with adults. Uh, it doesn't matter what age group, but it's really important if, for you to understand how uh, you are such a valuable asset. And I congratulate all of you for participating in this particular program uh, to be instrumental in changing the attitude of uh, people and educating them on the importance of physical activity and how important it is to learning all the while paying attention to diversity, bringing in all groups, uh, fairness and equity, uh, inclusion. And of course, you're gonna have to be doing this with collaboration and partnerships. Um, I'm going to end with a little video that depicts um, an individual uh, uh, from, from the Punjab who now lives in one of our territories in Canada called the Yukon. And her, his name is Gurdeep Pandher. And he is uh, focused on uh, positivity and uh, developing a positive attitude through Bhangra dancing. And he has uh, been responsible for this um, movement uh, across Canada. It's gone viral uh, uh, with uh, his YouTube videos. And I just want to share one of them with you and end uh, with it because um, he really has um, been a real phenomenon and a positive force. And this is Gurdeep uh, Pandra with um, some girls in the territory of the Yukon. Hey guys. <laughs> okay, my friends. Make sure that you don't slip. <laughs> Pretend you're not cold. getting us moving <laughs> yes we now we're going to share maps um, okay questions that's a beautiful thing you just said with questions um we'll share your pictures please you can all see madam in action last time i asked about to show a picture of uh, madam madam <laughs> skiing kar rahi hai to pichle session mein madam ne jo dikhaya tha uh, uh, jo class ke baad madam kehti main ski karne jaungi maine kaha tha photo dal dena to madam ne photo dala hai dekhiye Madam ski kar rahi hai, bahut active hai. One, one more picture. There's one more picture of ma'am. Another one more is there. The two of the majors. Picture. Can you see now the second one? The second image uh, picture. Let's see. Just, just the same one. Just the same. No, we'll be bringing another one because 
Yes. Now they come. Snow they can't. Up snow, That's Madam Ski Kari. You can see the snow. Thank you so much for taking us to the snow. Now we 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 feel that with the Bangra, we were there with you, and we could feel the snow. That's so nice of it. I mean, we, it was wonderful. Thank you so uh -huh. much for this wonderful experience you have given us. But I think uh, uh, it's quite a good time. So maybe I don't. We can take up questions right now, ma'am, since we are already late. So we we come up with the remarks because we are definitely and we are nearly eight thousand. Eight thousand women teachers joined your session. Thank you for joining. And, and, and we would send you the entire feedback with the with the numbers because that matters. So I I request our professor Claudia, ma'am, for your remarks, please. Thank you so much, Dr. Karen, for your presentation. I I have always had my Canada structures in many ways, especially their health system and it, a sport system that you have just presented to us. All the programs that Canada offers for a special population that are amazing. Uh, in Mexico, it's lack an evaluation scheme for public programs and policies to advance the resolution of these ills. I think in Mexico, the main problem is the continuity of the programs. Every time that we change the leaders, the programs are discarded and starting from a scratch. And that's what a question that I wanted to do. How do you uh, make to track each program? And the other thing is the challenge you present was amazing to, to be participate all the population in activity. That was a wonderful idea, and I need to know how do you evaluate that? And thanks for the video. I was just dancing. <laughs> <laughs> that I are two questions. How do you continue the program and how do you evaluate it? I don't know if we have time to answer, but if no, I will contact you directly to learn more. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, Dr. Claudia. I think um, you raise a very good point about change in leadership. And when change happens, then sometimes the programs that one has in place don't continue. So sustainability and keeping things going is a challenge for organizations when uh, people change in leadership positions. But I think if programs and organizations are already well established, um, that they can continue on their own, regardless of uh, government leadership changes. So if I use Canada as an example, and if I use participation as an example, it was started um, in the early 1970s, but because there were champions involved and leaders that ensured that the program kept going, even though the ministers of sport changed every few years with the government, I think it's the strength of the, uh, the program leadership that becomes really important that can override the change in the, uh, the government uh, leadership. So, uh, but an excellent question because that is always um, a challenge. Uh, so thank you for that. Thank you, Madam Claudia. Thank you so much for the question. I always believe because Canada, I love, because I it was my first visit to the country, but if and everybody, I mean, it's solved, it smiles. And I think um, um, the secret of it is you find anywhere you find them having a hearty laughter, people are active, whatever you say, that brings about a change. So I really love it. And I need to thank Professor Chella. It was because of they called the spot already. So let me hear Dr. Kishosa. Kishosa, Dr. Kishosa. Hello, Roy. I am the only so for your yeah. Chela was there. Yeah. Chela sir was there. Yeah. No, and, I, will, uh, I want to show a surprise to Dr. Karen. Uh, sure. Some, sure. So I, give me some more time. You need some time. Then I'll take up just one or two questions before that. 
yes sir you can have it but can i have the feedback that right now no no they might leave they might leave just have uh, maybe yes, sir by the time i take up one or two questions um there are a lot of questions which they have put across but i thought i'll take up uh, I don't know whether I should take up sir. One question is by Shali Verma, who says, "How how you reduce socially fragile adolescents the fear of being tagged gay in your country, which is a strong push to many girls out of the game." Could could you repeat that again, um, Shali Verma has asked a question: How you reduce socially fragile adolescents the fear of being tagged gay in your country? Gay. Which is a strong push oh, okay. to many girls yes. out of the game. Out of the game. Well, I think um, you know it's not. It used to be a stigma, and it's no longer the same stigma that it was before. And it's so much more socially acceptable that there's lots of programming in place to educate people on that in, you know, the school system has done an excellent job, I think. And, you know, I would say young people are much more accepting of that. It's just an everyday life of um, inclusion now that uh, older people didn't experience. So I would say the challenge is more with older people than it is with younger people because younger people tend to be more accepting. So uh, uh, it's education and it's really focusing on acceptance and that attitudinal change. And I think with that, that we can overcome those um, stigmas that still might exist, but um, with the programming that's in place and Certainly, I see lots of support from people um, uh, behind this and wanting uh, a more inclusive environment. And our national, provincial, territorial sport organizations are looking at um, new initiatives such, such as mixed, um, I'll give you an example, mixed rugby. Uh, so the sport of rugby and it's mixed ability rugby. It means that it doesn't matter what your ability is. If you are um, um, a, a para or a special needs or from a different religious background or a different uh, sexual orientation that you should all be able to participate and play together. And more and more organizations are focusing on that. So I think it's, um, again, the education piece. Thanks so a lot, ma'am. Good question. Thank you. Yeah, Kisho, sir? Is it ready, sir? You. Can't hear you. Yeah, uh, thank you, Professor Karen. I think it was a wonderful, uh, uh, you know, uh, presentation and also uh, the session from your side especially on uh, uh, sports in Canada with keeping Canadian active. You started with all the various uh, uh, activities which is carried out in this country and ended out with uh, a, a Bhangra. Bhangra, which is universal. Now I would like to show how we uh, did Bhangra and uh, since Professor Karen has not uh, been to <laughs> Kerala and India. So we too, uh, like, uh, you know, you have adopted our Bhangra so we should not be left out, you know, that we are not promoting it. So I will show you how we promoted Bhangra in our uh, institute. During this lockdown, we had a separate fitness program meant for the staff. So the faculty and the staff, we did a lot of fitness activities. And we too had Bhangra as a part of that to keep uh, uh, our staff active. So active in Canada is active in India. Uh, so <laughs> the same uh, active... Uh, we will show you. Just see this uh, our uh, action, uh, in the, uh, Bhangra in action in LNCP campus. Excellent. <laughs> you need to share, right? Yes.
So uh, I, I hope you will enter this. Is, this is, you know, ah, what I would like. Uh, what I just wanted to, you know, tell all our participants is that you know to keep on active, to keep yourself active. This type of activities is traditional. Our own, uh, you know, activities are of much help. Our, our Bhangra, Bharatnatyam, Kuchipudi. Like we have a lot of our own traditional dances in Canada also, there might be India also. So uh, to keep one active, active mentally and physically, this type of activities need to be promoted. And we have experience. You see the, the people who were dancing, they were of different age group, different gender, and also from administration, from coaching, from everywhere. It was a mixture, but all enjoy. They were keeping active. Their mental, you know, the level of their happiness, the level of their... Uh, uh, you know, readiness, everything, your mental alertness, everything improved. So, you know, we must try to promote more. The participants should um, uh, try to promote such sort of indigenous activities to keep themselves active, agile. And like in Canada, it is wonderful that in Canada, Bhangra is promoted. So why not in India? Let us use it to our children, our own children, our own girls and boys in schools, in colleges, in institutions. Let us promote this. That they will keep, the children will get themselves active they will their mental uh, readiness, happiness, uh, their uh, uh, you know the, their uh, uh, learning process, the entire thing will get activated. So that is why it is wonderful, excellent presentation. And again, uh, uh, Professor Karen, I would like to share one picture uh, we had. To, we were together in one world forum. I'll just show it to you. Yeah. This was in Malaysia in 2015. Oh, uh, yes. This, <laughs> this is what you are sitting beside me. Uh, we yes. had a, a panelist and uh, oh, just uh, six years back. Yes, I remember that. Thank you for sharing that. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Karen. Thank you very much for your wonderful presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Kishore. Thank sir. you. Thank you My so much. My honor. Thank you. So we have the president of Vasa with us. What else to speak of? I really am uh, on behalf of the Ministry of Youth Affairs and Sports, Government of India, Hello India. Thank you. Hats off to our dignified speaker. It was such a, a speech, which was uh, an inspirational talk. You took us, you took us a tour around Canada, <laughs> even though we were sitting here, we could, we could feel it. Because yeah. uh, here many of them said the brag and boat race, so why don't we do so? A number of us lessons learned by us, the best practices, what we, we think we could include in India. So thank you so much. And also imbibing some of our culture into yours. That was the biggest message you put across to us. Thank so you. So we have the Minister of the Present Sports Government of India, Women and Child Development, lecture by National College of Physical Education. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much for this wonderful experience and a memorable experience and awesome session that you have given for our teachers and we had nearly 8,000 women teachers whom you have really inspired. Thank you, ma'am. I also thank like you for to, the honor. I'd like to thank Professor Chella who, who was in our, uh, I was expecting for his message. I really need to thank sir because he's one of the, I would say, uh, the, the father of sport management in the world because I, I consider to be the pioneer. So thank you so much, sir, in his absence. Thank you so much for being a part of us. I'd like to thank Professor Claudia. Thank you, Claudia. Indeed, it was your, your, you are always very critical. And I always believe like you're a, a close associate and um, you bring in color. I always say, Darren brings in light, but you make it colorful. So thank you so much, <laughs> Madam Claudia, for this, for the your very gracious presence. I'd like to thank our principal, Dr. G. Kishore, sir who has also been attending uh, uh, for the World uh, Sport Management, a lot of conferences across the country. So, and a great uh, a person with a vision and mission and trying to take uh, LNCP to greater heights through a variety of programs. Uh, thank you so much sir, for supporting and being, and always inspiring us. Thank you, sir. I'd like to thank Dr. Sanjeev Patel, the co-host. I'd like to thank Mr. Harihar and Pranesh for the technical assistance. All my dear teachers, all my dear teachers, you're the heart and soul of this program. Thank you so much. Now for the feedback, please. Finish for the feed for the feedback. So we uh, we could send you some of the questions uh, 
can you maybe madam have a question we'll send you the questions uh, uh, dr karen because since we didn't have time we'll send the questions to you so that you can just see some of it and uh, okay and sure. we'll also send you the the feedback form because that All will right. be just because that number matters this is the first time we are having such a big number because for the morning session we nearly have 10000 we have 10000 in the morning so wow. and we, yeah and we are we are finishing at this this week on 27th we are closing in the evening okay so, that's so a large nice group women. yeah it's it's a group and it's women so they make it a point of attending all the sessions they're very particular uh -huh. of attending that's which is very unique of this program right so can you see can you see the feedback on the screen uh yes just of uh one and two no could you see yeah. the blue lines Yes, just questions one and two. But the others, if you scroll it down, you can see. You need to scroll it. Oh, okay. I don't know whether you yeah. can scroll it. Can Can Madam scroll the questions? Yeah, you yeah, can see. Yeah, yeah. I think the session was wonderful. It was superb, yeah. wonderful session. So I think you can see the feedback given was excellent. And uh, the it was some pointed at transfer, but we didn't have time. But it was such a it was such a, uh, a detailed session. And I know in between you wanted a water break. You mentioned of exercise break. But then I thought <laughs> of giving a water break in between, and uh, and uh, we request all the participants to kindly, if possible, do join for the uh, for the um, the international congress of the VASM that they have in two thousand twenty two. So you all can try for it, please. That's what it is. we can move, we can ask them because Qatar is slightly close by. So maybe the teachers can also think of joining. Nearly 2,600 teachers were already given the poll, so we'll wait till 3,000 at least. So all the uh, teachers who are interested in uh, attending the uh, the Vasam Congress, uh, maybe Madam, we will share the link with you so that if those who like to register and do it, you can try for it. Maybe you like to participate, so maybe we can share that. You can. Are you going to put or you could tell us and we could share the link with them, or you could. Dr. Karen, is that okay? Yes. No, I, I hear you. I'm going to send it to you, um, Dr. Usha, so that you can post it because I don't have it right in front of me now. No. We just have the website go live yesterday for the actual conference, so I want to make sure that I give you the correct link. Sure. So if you share that with the participants, their teachers who are interested can always participate in it. Absolutely. We have nearly so three thousand. We're waiting for three thousand to reach. Uh, so I think in a in a short time from now we have three thousand who have voted. So right, they're reaching. It's reaching three thousand. So once again, ma'am, thank you so much. And we are the uh, since we are so happy with the vessel, and I I know there are a lot of people approaching you for forming the maybe with regard to the sport management in India. When Kishore was saying, you know, like we also trying to see how things works in forming an association. So that's what we look forward to. But there are there were other organizations approached you. You mentioned to me last time. Sure. Well, thank you again for the invitation, and it was a, a pleasure to be involved once again. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you. Namaste. Yeah. Bye bye. Bye, Dr. Claudia. Dr. Kishore. Bye bye. <laughs> I'll send you that link, Usha. Sure, sure, sure. Thank, thank you. Bye. Okay. Bye, bye. Bye, bye, bye.